Welcome everyone to our webinar. Today we're going to be hearing from our very own Pete Bay about using intent data for churn reduction. Um, a couple of housekeeping items before I pass things to Pete. If you have any questions, please submit them in the Q&A tab and we'll try to answer them along the way or at the end of the presentation. And then we are recording this webinar and we'll be sending the on-demand link out afterward. So um, if you want to watch it again, you'll, you'll get that. Um, all right, so um, next slide, please. So I'm Marissa Carter. I'll be your webinar, webinar host for today. I'm the demand marketing manager here in Bob Bora. And as I mentioned, join me is Pete Bay. He's our VP of customer experience. Pete, want to introduce yourself? Yeah. Hi, everybody. I appreciate that. My, my headshot was blurred out. That's really the right call. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been in customer experience in one way, shape or form here for about two decades. Um, you know, and coming to Bambora, I've been here about a, a year now. And really, I think the thing that drew me here, aside from the people, you know, I, everybody kind of talks about how great the people are, but for the data that we sit on here, it's just, it's incredible. And you'll see it as we go through this, um, you know, and I know we have some customers on here and some folks that are thinking about becoming customers. And what I really want to kind of demonstrate today is just one of the different ways that you can use intent data. So we'll, we'll dig deeper in that, but I'm excited to be here. Thanks, Marissa. Thanks, Pete. Um, we're excited to have you. And I know the churn use case isn't one that's discussed as often as the typical sales and marketing use cases are. So I think I speak for everyone when I say that we're excited about what you're going to be sharing with us today. Um, before we get into that, um, to kick things off, we're going to start with a quick intro to Bambora for those of you who aren't familiar with us. Then Pete will walk us through what a health score is, how intent data can power your health score models, and then um, he'll do a live demo of, of how we monitor churn risk um, inside of PlanHat. Um, and then, of course, as time permits, we'll open it up for Q&A. Um, so if you're not familiar with Bambora, um, we are the leading provider of intent data, which we call Company Surge. It tells you which businesses are researching the products and services that you and your competitors sell. This is how Bambora helps marketing and sales uh, leaders prioritize the resources to generate more leads, pipeline, and opportunities. Um, so the way we do this is by understanding the usual content consumption patterns of a business against an intent topic within our taxonomy. So these may be related to B2B companies, products, solutions, or trends. And then we identify when those companies are consuming those topics more than they normally do, which is what we call company surge. So in short, it's a buying intent signal that indicates when a company may be in market for a particular B2B product or service and the intensity of that interest. So now let's hear from Pete. So my first question for you, Pete, um, can you explain what a health score is and, and why it's important for organizations to pay attention to? Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one thing that I would just to kind of take a step back here, you know, when most people think about intent data, they think about how they can leverage it for lead prioritization, how they can determine which of their customers or prospects are in market for a particular product or service at a particular time. You know, and so we're, we're kind of turning that on its head a little bit and using some of the same fundamentals to really look for research signals that somebody is in market for another solution, right? Um, so there's a lot of different ways that we can use intent data. And, you know, in this webinar, we're gonna cover how it powers a health score. And to kind of jump into to health scoring a little bit here, I, I won't, I promise I won't read these slides to you guys, but a health score is really at, at its core, most fundamental level. It's a symbol that represents the underlying aggregate of all the different signals that we have for a customer, right? And a signal could be a, a number of different things. One of the things that I love about PlanHat is the customizability of how we set up health scores. And I'll show you guys that actually live in the platform. Um, but think about if, as a CSM or an account manager or, or as an AE, I haven't reached out to one of my predefined accounts in a particular cadence. If I have deviated from a playbook, if the customer gives me bad feedback, if I have a QBR and I just, I don't like the way that it went, right? All of these things can go into a health score. So you have some of this qualitative stuff, but then you also can add in things that are more quantitative, right? Like things like product usage. If we have a baseline of activity of email cadence, and then there's a, a kind of a derivation from that, you know, that's going to show up in a health score. And so what it could look like is something like this, right? If you have a baseline of five, a very healthy company could be 10, right? Or a non or an unhealthy customer could be a one or a two or a three. Um, 
in our organization here, and you'll see this a little bit as we start to go through kind of the, the live demo, is when a customer's health goes from five to four to three, once it gets into that three range, we know there's significant um, variation from the baseline. So we do what's called a red accounts meeting. And we basically get in and we discuss what's going on with these accounts, right? Why are these signals showing up? Why, are, why is usage down? Why is perhaps email cadence down? Are they signaling research consumption? You know, I think, again, when people think about intent data, they think about it very kind of bottom of the funnel. And they think about like the, the last activity that somebody's doing right before they, they make a decision or purchase. And we really think about intent is kind of witnessing this entire B2B research journey, right? So there's varying levels of intent as a customer goes through a research cycle. And one of the things that we're trying to figure out here is where is a customer within that research cycle? And we use what we call a search score to determine kind of the, the level of depth of research in which they're at. And I'll, I'll show you guys that a little bit as well here. Um, does that answer your question, Marissa? It does, thank you. Great. So the idea here, and I, I'll, I'll breeze through these slides, you know, we'll, we'll send out this deck afterwards, but I, I wanna touch on this a little bit more live. If you're a customer of Bumboard, you have direct access to this. This is just a, a view from our Market Insights dashboards. And really the idea here, and, and you know, pay no attention to the, the titles or anything on here. The idea here is that we're looking back over time at consumption patterns. Are, are our customers consuming B2B websites, are they consuming, are they downloading white papers? Are they spending time reading reviews? Like what are they actually doing and when are they doing it? That becomes really important. So what I'll, I'll walk you through as we get into the live portion of this is how do you determine kind of that consumption pattern relative to customers that have churned? And then how do we start to predict that, right? Because the predictive part is what we're after. Like I think if you think about like the, the analytics maturity curve, you go from was it descriptive to diagnostic to predictive, and then ultimately prescriptive as you kind of walk up that journey. And the idea here is that, yes, we wanna understand what was happening, but we wanna understand what was happening so that we can predict it in the future. And so using our tools here, we can do a hell of a lot with this data. It's really fun. Um, you know, and we're, we're a DAS company, right? So we're a, a data as a service. So we provide, in, in very many forms, raw data, we provide it in, in, in integrations, we provide insights views like the ones that you're seeing here. But very often what that means is that a churn signal for us is very difficult because very often, think for example, like a six cents, right? We do lose some customers to six cents, but very often it's because we weren't able to educate them that we're actually better together, right? If you have a Bombora license and a Sixth Sense license, you can leverage all of your Bombora data within Sixth Sense. And the same thing for like a Terminus or a demand base. Um, so really, what a lot of people think about creating a churn signal is just, let's just grab a, a group of our competitors, throw it into a pile. And if they start to show research behavior on our competitors or our partners, like we should reach out and have a conversation. Well, yes, that may be true. You probably should have a conversation and figure out what's going there and how you can help them um, you know, reach further value through integration and through partnership. It's not a true churn signal, right? Because there's false positives in there. Maybe they're just doing research on a platform they already have and they wanna know more about it, right? It has nothing to do with you. So what I wanna show you is that in order to create a, a, a churn signal, as we call it, or a, a cluster of topics, because everything on our side is based on topics within our taxonomy that are classified via our NLP engines or natural language processing on our cooperative sites. Um, but we wanna create a group of topics that aren't just intent data. It's not just our brand name. It's not just our competitors or partners. It's also all of these other things that could signal kind of macroeconomic things that are happening within the other environments and ecosystems. So I wanna walk through that a little bit. Um, but same thing, right? One of the really nice things about intent data is it's not, it's not let's build this model and six months from now, we'll have an output that's going to help us. It's let's build this right now and then we'll go pull a report and I can tell you which customers could potentially be in market for a different solution. Like to me, as I'm not really a millennial, but I'm not that far from it. I feel old at this moment, but um, instant gratification is still something that I love, right? Like Amazon has trained us all to basically just demand instant gratification. So if I can go in here, set up, uh, do a quick look back, determine what my customers are consuming, set up a signal, and then go pull a report against my current customers to see what's going on in market, like that's pretty darn exciting to me. Hopefully it's exciting to you all. I assume it is or you wouldn't be here. 
I have another question. Um, how often do you recommend teams be checking these churn signals and health scores? Should they do it daily, weekly, monthly? So we meet weekly from a red account perspective, um, but we build playbooks and action from an automation perspective on demand, right? So if a customer starts to move into a customer health score that we determine to be you know, less than optimal, we start to build nurture and education campaigns, right? Depending on what we're seeing from that particular customer, depending on what their use case is, their size, their engagement with us, we, we create kind of this cascade or this scaffolding of different use cases um, that we can then go out and nurture for them and educate them on. And sometimes it's genuinely CSM, AM, reach out, right? Like this, it's time to have a conversation with this customer. You know, maybe, maybe they aren't looking at something from Bambora or maybe they are. Right. But we've got to get in there and figure it out. Sometimes we have clearer signals than others. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit. But I'd say that at a minimum, you should be discussing this weekly. Right. I, I think that's easy enough to fit into an existing workflow. I know many organizations that have customer success teams have some some concept of health remediation. Right. And often that's a weekly or biweekly cadence. This is an easy thing to work into that. Um, if I'm if I'm working on key accounts and I've got five, six, seven accounts. Um, this is something I'm probably looking at, if not weekly, bi-weekly, monthly before I'm talking to them in my monthly meeting, in my QBR, my bi-weekly meeting, right? There's so much intelligence that can be gathered here. Um, what, I'm, what I'm trying to show with this screenshot here is, is genuinely, it's not just about logging into the Bambora UI and pulling this report and building, building these signals. We can put this data where you want it to be, right? If you've got an existing integration within Salesforce or within HubSpot, we can push these things to where your, your customers live or your CSMs live, right? Um, and part of that is genuinely, we just wanna make this as easy as possible. Come into the UI, I'll show you how to set it up. Um, you know, and after, after we walk through this, our implementation team will do this for you. If you reach out, this is something you're interested in, we'll set it up for you. We don't charge for that. Like let's let's work together to kind of get you guys some more intelligence. But the idea here is we can set this up directly into your end platforms. And just a, another thing that you can see here, we, we give you a really nice view inside of your existing integration. If you're Salesforce, if you're HubSpot, um, we, can, we can give you a number of different views that you can see here. What's actually going on? What topics are they consuming? Um, at, at what kind of consumption pattern are they consuming? And we can show week over week trends. And I think that stuff becomes really powerful, especially as you start to build them into third parties like a plan hat, which is a customer success platform to, to power a lot of the automation that we use on our side. Um, so this is what I was talking about a little bit about, and I will show you this live as well. Again, I, I want some of this from a posterity perspective. So as you, as you start to dig into this a little bit more and you have the deck on your side, you can see some of this stuff. But the idea here is that we can create a signal that we can then take immediate action on, whether it's schedule a call, whether it's send an educational email, whether it's, hey, we've got a gap here. This customer is trying to do something that we genuinely don't understand. Let's create some enablement material around that, right? So. We, I think all of us as customer success professionals have an innate sense of urgency, right? Um, so waiting isn't something that we're great at. And one of the nice things about this is that you, you can do this right away. You can deliver value right away to a customer that, that may be on the cusp. Um, so I'm gonna jump over here and, and start to kind of walk you through a little bit of the process. Um, this will probably be a little bit clunky because I think reality is a little bit clunky, but I, I wanna jump over and I wanna show what just a general process of this would look like. Right. So first things first, I would jump in here and I'd start to pull a close a close loss report. I want to look at last quarter. I want to get some sufficient data here so I can start to look at some trends. But I want to look at last quarter. I want to look at the quarter before that. What did we lose? I want to export that. Right. And really what I'm after here is this column right here, which is this domain. This domain is going to give us the ability to go in from an insights perspective and monitor the consumption pattern for these customers. So. Let's, let's do that, right? So I've, I've already done that. Um, so I've, I've preloaded this. Again, everybody has access to this. So I pulled about 40 accounts um, that you know, churned over the, the course of probably six to nine months here. Um, and then I built, a, I built a look back so that we could look at consumption patterns relative to their renewal date so that we have an idea of a baseline of activity of what they're doing and how they're doing it as they get up to our renewal. Right. Most customers don't make the decision to churn the day before they renew. Right. There's there's an entire pattern there. And as much as I don't want to admit it, many customers make the decision not to renew very early on. Right. Um, 
So we're trying to look for themes and trends across our customer base to identify what these customers are doing and what they're looking at that's causing them to churn. So within our insights view here, we've got a couple of different dashboards. I'll take you through a few of them here. Um, but the idea here is I've uploaded my list of domains of customers that over the last six months are, are no longer with us, uh, unfortunately. And so we've linked all of them here. We found out what they're doing. The, the topics here in a silo by themselves are irrelevant, right? Um, some, com some companies are gonna be a little bit larger. Some are gonna be a little bit smaller. If you have the time, segmenting this is gonna be helpful. Um, you wanna segment this by persona and size of company if you can. Um, you know, I, for, for this purpose, I just kind of threw this together so you all could see it. But the idea here is that as we start to get down, to right here, we start to get a look back of what these customers are doing um, over time, right? And we, get, we start to see their consumption patterns build over time relative to their renewal. So you can see, for example, like you take a, like a customer right here. Renewal for them was actually in September, right? So their consumption pattern of their research spikes really heavily in July and August. Um, and so what we can do then is we can start to look at all of the individual topics that these, cons that these customers are consuming up to their renewal point before they churned, right? So one of the, one of the really, uh, for me, um, you know, I'm kind of a, a data dork. I was a paid search guy for, for quite some time. So I, I love pulling things into spreadsheets and manipulating them. If you look at these things in a silo, in a vacuum, it's like, all right, these topics to me don't really make a whole heck of a lot of sense, right? Like I would, if I had to pick out topics that were going to identify a customer leaving, leaving, you know, our interaction, I wouldn't think ban the box or collaborative content, right? And there's always going to be some noise here because I'm not predefining topics. I'm going against my entire taxonomy and I'm saying, hey, Bombora taxonomy, tell me what these customers are looking at. Cooperative, tell me what these customers are looking at. Right. So there is going to be a little bit of noise. So this is kind of where, to me, some of the fun comes in. And you're going to see over the next couple of quarters here, we're going to roll out some automation for you all around this and help you kind of define these topics and build, build really nice signals around this as we start to get more sophisticated around the data that you all are able to, to share with us. But one of the nice things here is I can actually go in, I can dump these topics into a spreadsheet. Right. From there, I can actually start to build I'll actually do it over here so you can see it a little more cleanly. I can start to build what could potentially be identification for a churn signal, right? And what I'm looking for is a group of topics that are going to identify either I'm looking at a partner or a competitor, I'm looking at specific products, um, I'm looking at things that are just clear, um, clear signs like vendor termination, right? You know, in a, in a bigger organization with procurement and things like that, you know, there's, there's set processes that they have to go through. And an SME side, you know, they can send an email. Um, but we started to pare down that list. So there was a couple of hundred topics that came up that, you know, as we were looking at those accounts in aggregate over the, the time of their consumption pattern, we started to pare that down into topics that really, that made sense, right? You still, these things still have to pass an eye test at this point. Um, and what's nice about this is it starts to look at of the 40 customers that churned, well, guess what? 27 of them looked at enterprise software investors, investing, economy, founder liquidity, right? If we're looking for exit type events, if we're looking at maybe our, our main point of contact is going to leave, the business is going to be acquired or the business is going to sell, potentially they're not meeting earnings expectations, which are all signals that, you know, potentially there's going to be cuts in spend, right? That coupled with like intent data, Bombora, partner names. If we group all of these things together, it starts to give us um, much greater statistical significance as we start to take out some of the noise push it in through some, oper some operational rigor and out from the other side of that comes what we consider a signal, right? So the next step of this, I've identified my topics. So we've gone in here, we've, we've determined the aggregate, the total amount of topics that all of our customers are consuming. We've pared down that list so they pass an eye test. And now what we're gonna do is we build them into a cluster, right? A cluster on our side, and I'll just jump over here. A cluster on our side is, is really nothing more than just a group of topics. Um, and we create a signal from that. When I did that, and then I ran it against our existing customer base, we've, we've got some, some customers that, you know, based on what we've seen previously, there's, there's some conversations that we need to have, right? But the idea here is that not just to look at this in the abstract, it's to power a health score, right? So we're going to jump over. So this is, this is Plan Hat, you know, and if you use Gainsight, if you use Tango, if you use Smart Carrot, 
um, any any number of, of CSPs can be can be integrated via our data, right? Um, one of the nice things about this, and you know, this is kind of an example here, you would you would split out your health score, obviously. Not all of your customers are gonna have the same signals that are gonna mean the same things to, you know, based on what they're doing. But down at the bottom here, we start to feed in, and this is something that's existing on our side, you start to feed in when they are flagging this competitive signal, when it starts to trend up. Like, let's start to knock that health score down a little bit, right? And so we can create from that automation. So in Plan Hat, and again, if you're in Gainsight or Tatango or something else, or even if you're using Outreach, if you're using HubSpot, you can create the same levels of automation or Outreach. The idea is that you understand what your customers were doing right before they churn, you pare down that topic list, you create a competitive signal, right? I, I think I called mine potential churn, and then you integrate it somewhere meaningfully or even just take out the raw data and start reaching out to these customers, right? Like if you wanna just kind of get down and dirty, roll up your sleeves and like, let's make some impact today. And we do that all the time. Um, but once we get into this view right here, we can start to build a playbook. And that playbook can be triggered by, for example, accounts under five health score, right? And from there, we can start to build out those steps, whatever we want them to be. Maybe it's schedule a QBR, maybe it's send a, a nurture email, right? Um, but the idea is that we have, we're sitting on all of this really rich information. Now, I did this, right? You guys can, could kind of see that. And again, happy to, happy to field calls or questions after this to kind of walk through it on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But when you actually take this and then put that competitive cluster or that potential churn cluster or that grouping of topics against our existing account list, like we've got some customers that we need to go have some, some conversations with, right? Like you see a lot of those topics being triggered. Now, again, an individual topic very frequently isn't going to be that pure of a signal for you unless it is so perfect, right? And in some instances that happens. Um, but, you know, FTE reduction, layoffs, economy, founder liquidity, and then also looking at a partner like Sixth Sense, like let's have a conversation, right? We should be able to light that data up within Sixth Sense for you. Um, but I think that's one of the things that is, is really nice. It's just kind of the immediacy of this entire concept here. And then the other thing here too, is we can start to pair, back, pair this back. Now, what I was doing here is just kind of flipping back and forth between, between integrations or um, insights views. So we have three different insights views that come out of the box. Um, and then there's some customizations that we can do with our professional services team. The first view that you saw was trying to drill down into those individual accounts, get the trend over time. We're now over here and looking at the total addressable market and it gets us this really nice view over here that I wanna highlight because this view over here starts to help us make sense of where these customers are within their research journey, right? Because depending on where they are from their research journey, your mitigation effort may be very different, right? If somebody's very early in their research relative to their renewal, and you know, one thing I would say about this is if you're doing this analysis, you want to create cohorts relative to the renewal date, right? I don't want to look at a customer that's renewing tomorrow and one that's renewing nine months from now because it skews their consumption pattern and it skews where they are within their research. Um, so let's just make sure that we have tight groupings and cohorts within here. But if you look at our customer base, you know, some of them are, are very deep in research relative to this group of topics and relative to the baseline of their traditional consumption pattern, right? We take a 12 week, 12 week consumption pattern. And if we get derivation off of that consistently, that's when we start to, to increase that surge score. Um, so you see kind of three different levels here are three buckets, if you will. So 12% are in that very early. And this is where we wanna be, right? These are the customers that we really want to start seeding ideas. We want to make sure that they're seeing the value. We want to really start looking at that health score. What was the engagement? Maybe, you know, if you have a lot of customers, this can kind of help shine a flashlight on or a spotlight on where you can actually go spend your time. So early research, active research. And then when you get down into this level of in-depth research, these are customers that are, you know, really big, kind of really big derivations from their baseline or deviations from their baseline. Um, so these are customers that, you know, you probably want to get on the phone call with. And, and again, like this is, this data is illustrative. I don't have these tightly grouped in cohorts. Um, otherwise you wouldn't see such a, a big skew. Um, but yeah, I mean, there's, there's so much that we can do just simply by taking information that we already have, like customer data, um, customers that have churned, customers that have we've recently won, right? We can look at that research journey. 
On our side, we can actually even take it a little bit further. We have some internal tooling on our side for um, what we can, what we call a historical buyer's journey analysis, which gets really in depth as to what actually happens against a control group. This is just a light, easier way for you to get in here and get something of value really quickly. Um, Marissa, I think, I think we're doing pretty good on time here, but was there any questions uh, on your side? I'm gonna jump back to the deck here. Yeah, um, so one question we have is, when you're seeing accounts doing research that signals that they might churn, do you recommend someone reach out immediately or start with nurture first, or maybe a mix depending on their level of research? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, and it really depends, you know, that, that last view that we were looking at, determining where those customers are within their research cycle. If they're in that, that top of funnel early research into, you know, a lot of the things that we were talking about, depending on your topic and your, your competitive set, Usually that's when I start with more of a, a nurture, like let's just get some educational material in front of them. Let's reach out and have a mild conversation of, hey, are you getting the value that you hoped you were? You know, and one question that I ask really frequently that I think a lot of people are really hesitant to ask because it, it comes off a little bit odd, but it is so helpful. Every customer that I talk to in one way, shape or form at the end of the call or, or at some point in the call, I say, if you had to renew tomorrow, would you, right? There's so much information that you get from that. It puts people on the spot. So they're like, oh, I wasn't expecting that. Um, you know, and any hesitation there at all, it's like, I've got work to do, right? Um, so I think that's part of it. If you're deep in that funnel, like right at the bottom of deep, active research, like, let's just get on the phone. I'm just going to call you. Let's have a very candid conversation. And honestly, as a CSM, especially like I know some of my, my key accounts, CSMs that have just a few accounts, they know, right? Like this is, this is helpful but they know what's going on with these accounts. So it's, you know, it, it, it uh, very oftentimes where this is really good is it validates your instincts, right? Great CSMs have great instincts and this is a, a great validation. Um, wow. One thing to cover off on here, you know, this was, this was based on a, a Forrester study that was done, um, like I, I believe it was a TEI or total economic impact study, um, but 10% reduction in a very large organization um, in customer churn, just using our intent data to monitor, like it's it's incredible. Like there was there was millions of dollars there. The the other piece of this is since we started using, we're, we're very big on kind of drinking our own champagne here. But since we started using this here, we've seen a sixty percent reduction of customers that go from red, who are in that red area, to remediation. Um, so it works. It genuinely works. Absolutely. Um, well, it looks like we are pretty much at time, but um, Pete, I just wanted to thank you for your time. I'm a very no, thank you. person, so seeing how you actually have it set up step-by-step step was really helpful. So thank you for showing us that. Um, and since we don't have time for questions, um, please reach out if you do have questions. We'll, we'll follow up with those who we weren't able to um, get to. We'll follow up with you one-on-one, -on -one, but Again, big thank you, Pete, um, for your presentation. And I hope everyone found it as interesting as I did. Um, and thank you all for joining us today and have a great day, everyone. Thank you, everyone.